I want to first go to Tesla and GM. Can both of these go higher? I mean, because it seems to me like if you're believing in Tesla kind of as an overall market, maybe you're not believing as much in GM. And if the wind comes out of the sales of Tesla, given the strong surge it's gotten and you're feeling a little risk averse, maybe you do go into GM. Um, you know, John, I think I think those are two companies that are both sit in the intersection of climate and digitization, but very different parts of the sharp ratio, right? Very different parts of the risk reward. Tesla, we think, is a change the world kind of company um, that that touches arguably the largest ham in the world. GM doesn't need to do what Tesla is doing in order to be a very good investment for the level of risk you're taking. We describe GM as the spactopus. There's at least eight, <laughs> maybe ten or twelve kind of incubating SPACs inside the company that kind of, we think with a little bit of separation and independence can make themselves available to an ESG and tech investor. Without that, it's not going to be a great story, but we think the management team um, gets it and we expect some action behind their, behind their announcements and intentions over the next well, frankly, you know, immediately, like at any moment kind of thing, or or they don't, right? And so whereas Tesla, you're, you're making a very big bet. You need them to be much, much bigger than cars uh, and into batteries and installed base in order to justify the, the, the risk. Cars and batteries, those things are the business. But what should you take away from Tesla spending one and a half billion and counting on Bitcoin? I mean, it, you're buying a Tesla or not buying a Tesla, a Powerwall or not a Powerwall, either way, whether it's with Bitcoin or with cash. But this generated a lot of attention. Is this uh, a marketing move, part of the story that really doesn't have to do with the fundamental nuts and bolts, or is it something more than that? All of the above. <laughs> Frankly, John, uh, I think let's, let's get some perspective. $1.5 billion dollars that's a hell of a lot of money, uh, someone like you and me, I guess, uh, or an average investor, let's say, an average company even. Uh, it's 0.2% of Tesla's market cap. So imagine if you, John, invested 0.2% of your net worth in Bitcoin. That's something, right? Um, so, yeah, I think there's a bit of, bit of marketing in there. And then perhaps some long-term risk management and logic as well. So I, paradoxically, you, you may see well-heeled companies with ballast and market cap you know, wade into the Bitcoin uh, universe. Uh, not so much, uh, uh, some, it's not something for a GM or a Ford or, you know, one of my other non-Tesla stocks to do. That makes sense? Yeah. Hmm. Adam, um, in aggregate, no. I mean, everybody's talking about supply chains and input cost. Musk himself tweeted about nickel, I think, last night. What do you tell investors who are looking at the industry as a whole and, and ask where, for example, where are all of these batteries going to come from? That's our number one question right now, uh, to be honest, um, Carl. Uh, I, I, you know, there's a lot of client questions on chip shortage. Folks, we're not going to be talking about chip shortage later this year. I mean, there, there's aspects behind the chip shortage that I think the United States needs to think about from a national security perspective, you know, about uh, a, lot, a range of things where we don't control our own destiny we might need to think about. Um, but the big, the big uh, elephant in the room, the blind spot, is the battery cell shortage. Uh, we're asking our management teams about it. There's still a lot of work to do. Our, our chemists in, in Asia and our battery folks uh, say it's kind of hold your breath territory now. Not an issue yet. But we think there's going to be a supply demand imbalance for batteries, not just batteries categorically, but particularly renewable batteries. If you think about where is Apple going to get their battery from uh, five, six, seven years from now, and you imagine the level of transparency around that supply chain, you know, people might ask, is it a blood battery, right? I mean, a dirty little secret, folks, is batteries is a really dirty business in the traditional form in terms of water, CO2, mining, labor practices. And that all has to be redone. And so we, we can imagine quite acute battery cell supply shortages for the type of battery that's going to be in a renewably sourced ESG tick the box type of battery. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, it's just, it this does. is not going and away. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.